Tons of blessings and tons of love to all of the Sun Soul Collective. I hope that everybody is doing fantastic out there in lieu of all of the present circumstances and adjustments that we've all had to make in our lives. But today we are going to be talking about the new moon in Aries happening on March the 24th. This is when the sun and the moon are going to meet at 2.27 a.m. Pacific. And it is going to be meeting at 4 degrees and 12 minutes of the cardinal fire sign representing the first house of the zodiac, talking about our personalities, our identifications, and who we really are at our core, the I am that I am. And this is also going to be conjunct to the asteroid that we call Chiron, which represents that healer, heal thyself. It represents this perpetual wound that in ourselves and our own um, unconscious state, as well as the collective unconscious state, we have been wounded. And always remember that the light enters in the place of our wounds. And so Chiron's message of being wounded is in order to heal so that that wound can then be turned into the superpower. And right now, we are all learning a lot more about who we are at our core, what really creates passion and desire in our lives, what do we really have the stamina and the energy to give ourselves over to, and what have we had enough of? What sort of um, global collective wound have we been perpetuating this entire time by not taking our own personal power and changing the narrative to this major holographic story that we're all living and so these are a lot of the questions that are going to come up this new moon is in a direct square to both the north and south node it's also in a square to the eclipse that happened on december the 25th the christmas eclipse that we went through at four degrees of capricorn as cardinal signs do square and oppose so this has been an interesting kind of activation of the four degree which is normally meant to represent stability structure foundation but in in all actuality, this four degree activation has proved to be a pretty hectic one. So with Chiron and this new moon in square to the nodes, I've been talking about it nonstop for um, about the last month that the Chiron specifically with the nodal square has been really implementing this massive need for us to really take care of ourselves and to look at our patterns and to look at what parts of our identification no longer serve us and need to be released? What parts of ourself have we become distracted by, by giving our attention to other things that essentially we're, de we're really realizing don't actually matter right now? And what are we doing to really move forward as far as the collective, come home, take care of the family, take care of the sanctuary, really look at it from some different types of perspectives to see if our home is conducive for health and wellness or if it's sort of that cesspool of um, enabling ourselves to still be in these, uh, you know, again, just distracted and suppressed states of being because before all of this craziness hit on a mass level, there was, there is and was a lot of people who felt like they had hit their perpetual end of the rope, you know, going through depression, anxiety, and the stresses of life, the stresses of bills, and um, trying to balance home and family with the economic and also career structure of their lives and a lot of people we all strive to be independent we strive to be free we strive to have the you know overall say about what happens to us and um, we like to believe that we have something called freedom even though essentially we don't and so a large part of the population is waking up to the fact that they have really been allowing themselves to be in these deep sleep states by not asking questions, not just about the world around them, but about themselves most importantly. So now as everybody does go towards that North Node in Cancer going home and going into the home and family unit and really looking at this very sacred place from these different vantage points. I mean, some of us, as you know, there's people that 
really do a lot to distract themselves from being at home and from being with their family and their loved ones because, you know, look, people are afraid to make major changes whenever it comes to relationship status and also family just in general because there is so much tradition and status quo put on what we should and shouldn't be doing. And even though divorce is a pretty prevalent thing these days, people still do stay together for the very wrong reasons. And this new moon is also in a semi-square to Venus and Venus is at home in the sign of Taurus, right? And Uranus is also in the sign of Taurus and that's what's been breaking up the, the tradition and the foundations and the things that we have considered to provide us with safety, security and comfort. And we've had to really learn how to grow, right? But Venus discusses the whole topic about relationships and also money, our possessions and things that we really find value in. So all of that is really, you know, in this clash with the new moon. And of course, new moons, they represent new beginnings, right? So this is saying there is a new beginning in the way that we deal with the irritation of um, things not really looking the way we want them to. Because as I go back to saying, a lot of people distract themselves from being at home with their friends, their family, their loved ones, because they're not actually satisfied in those relationships. They're not happy and they're not comfortable. So, you know, people work far more than they really should. You know, some people don't even need to, but they take on extra jobs. Sometimes whenever people come home from work, they just sit in their driveway and contemplate um, <laughs> their lives or just even like just getting some time by themselves. A lot of people are starved of um, their very own frequency of being in their own space. People don't have a lot of uh, space to get away from others sometimes. So now in the situation where we're forced to come home and to deal with these things, people are going to have a lot of epiphanies that aren't going to be so, um, you know, I guess an easy pill to swallow because we only have ourselves to blame for the situations that we're in. Nobody else is to blame and not even with this whole, um, you know, crisis that's going on uh, all over the world. There's still essentially nobody to blame because everything is a projection, a manifestation of our internal world. And this is a collective manifestation. And this is also our time whenever we're going to be able to band together, come together in unity, oneness, and wholeness, and show what we're really made of, especially the way showers and the star seeds who have been activated and are awakened there's a mass amount of the population who's going to be awakening as we speak. And some of these people, whenever they go through their activations, are going to be, um, you know, putting their boots on and jumping to the front lines to basically battle this spiritual warfare that we have going on because this could easily create a mass epidemic of depression and anxiety and worry and stress and stress is one of the biggest factors that is a catalyst to weakening the immune system and so we have to continue to remember to put ourselves in a positive state of being you know for a large amount of the collective that does watch sun soul tv we already are um you know a band of individuals who have gone rogue against society's nature and status quo and who have already learned to live a much more secluded, isolated, and, you know, essentially quarantined lifestyle. We already practice social distancing. So, you know, for me personally, and I've mentioned it, absolutely nothing has changed. The only thing that's actually changed for me is that um, I'm cooking at home more versus, you know, ordering on my apps. That's about it but this is normal everyday life for me. My work still continues and there's, you know, I'm not the only one. So that's a really beautiful thing for a lot of us to really know the benefit of this time alone, to know what it's like whenever distraction is removed from your life, because you're aware of yourself, you're aware of your thoughts, you're aware of your actions or inactions in a lot of senses. You're um, just much more, tapped in to your own understanding about the nature of reality and the nature of your own life and you're able to really contemplate on some other 
uh, topics that are not normal for the general population to converse about. And again, that comes back to just imagining that a large part of the population has never asked about the nature of their reality. They've never questioned the state of affairs. And, you know, more and more, as the atrocities have gone on, the, um, you know, global population has uh, awaken quite a bit to that, you know, no, there is no overarching um, governmental structure that has our best interests in mind. And so we need to, as a people, take responsibility for ourselves and start making some very educated and also realistic um, moves, you know, we need to come up with some action and we need to practice that action. And right now, the funniest part is that the, our biggest action and our biggest um, ally is, you know, in a sense of how the normal world works in action. So yes, whenever we come out of this, this Aries new moon is really showing us that we are going to have a new identification. We're going to have a new ego identity. We're going to be associated and connected to different people, to different organizations, to different philosophies, to different belief systems. Um, we're all expanding in some major and massive ways. And so as again, you know, we look at this square to the north and south node being the collective destiny points. Are we going to stay trapped into the draconian, Capricornian, Saturnian suppression structure of that south node? Or are we going to really take the responsibility and heal from within the home and family unit and bring about this connection that cannot be broken, right? So where are we going to basically put ourselves in a place of authority? Because the square to this new moon is saying, you have to do something new. You have to actually alter your uh, personal flow. Like you can't go to work right now. You can't go and do the things that you thought you needed to do that were so very important before. And now there's the realization that, no, that's actually not what's most important. What's most important is at home. And so we have to really kind of abandon our previous posts in many ways and start to look at what am I now going to represent? Who am I now after this major, massive collective change and transformation? Who am I going to be moving forward? What sort of influence have I had on the world around me up until this point? And what sort of influence do I wanna have moving forward? Do I wanna to continue to be a part of the problem or do I wanna be a part of the solution? And at the base level, we have to look at what we're investing into because the money is what keeps everything going, the attention and um, you know feeding the system. So we need to pull back from feeding the system of the things that no longer resonate with us and that have proved to be faulty structures of a fake reality, right? This is a false flag event. This is a false matrix that we live in. And we know this, those of us who are in the know and have taken the time to really study and break down the nature of reality have realized that this is all an actual broken down reality, that this is not the same place that we once were. And, you know, that's the thing that's been really hard for people's minds to shift is that there was, you know, pre a certain time frame and it, it's basically going back to about 2009 is whenever the major shift started happening, taking full effect in 2012. And now here, we're, we're basically no longer in any sort of physical reality whatsoever. We are now fully submerged into a new dimensional spectrum of um, simulation a simulated experience of life and it doesn't really matter how we got here the fact is that we're here and also the fact is is that the technology to bring us here obviously exists and that we're going to have to continue to make um the most of it through the level of consciousness in which we have obtained and are obtaining and will continue to obtain and that our collective evolution of consciousness is going to relate into the mass awakening that is already occurring right now and this is the tipping point right this is the age of illumination this is the age of aquarius and this is the age of the unification into the oneness 
So why is this particular experience affecting every single person on the planet? It's so that we can start to come into this oneness consciousness from a different perspective than we've ever been given before. And unfortunately, as we know, the human species, we learn from tragedy, we learn from hardship, we learn from trauma the best. That is our fastest agent of change. And so now that the change is upon us and the shift is really happening, um, we have been working for this for years. You know, those of us who have been um, on this mission have not taken it lightly. And we've all known that something major was going to go down in the neighborhood. And then looking at astrology, we all knew that the face of the planet was going to change forevermore with this Capricorn stellium. And it has. There's been many, 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 many predictions as to how all of this was going to happen and you know first and foremost was the massive solar flare but this has been you know absolutely different and that may still very well happen i mean human life and this planet and the universe as we know it it is so vast it is so massive and extraordinary but at the same time it's so simple and fragile and vulnerable and so no matter what it is that we're going through no matter where it is in the space-time continuum or multi-dimensional simultaneous existence we are we should always be practicing a, a level of gratitude that allows for more to come in because it's not about what's happening it's not about what you're experiencing it's about how you're dealing with it and the effect that you're allowing it to have on your life if you're turning these um, seemingly ne negative lemons into lemonade and you're making the best of it because you know as people wake up, that is whenever people are going to take charge. And that is the whole thing, right? Whatever's actually going on really has nothing to do with what we're seeing in the media. It's something far deeper. It's something far more sinister, as we all are pretty aware of that. And this is all leading us towards a place in which the truth will come out and emerge. So we're going to have to make that our new tradition. Our new tradition with the semi-square to Venus from this new moon with Chiron there as well needs to be about a new tradition of truth, a new tradition of a true sense of security because there's transparency. And that's what we all need to fight for because after we've all gone through this sort of experience, there is a leveling up of the collective consciousness which can then handle a lot more than what was previously thought. And that's the thing, you know, it's, it's unfortunate that we still have lack consciousness, scarcity consciousness. Um, we're still selfish hoarders in a lot of senses. But for the most, this has been a very peaceful experience. And I hope that that continues on in that fashion and in that matter. Because that's how we're setting a new precedence. And it's not through conformity. It's through our own authority of um, really understanding that there are certain games that are being played and that we do not need to physically go out and fight them with our fists. We need to go internal and we need to wake up. We need to turn on our own inner light force and we need to start to shine that really bright because you know, whenever you also talk about Taurus in the second house, you're talking about self-consciousness, self-worth, and that all needs to be turned into the soul consciousness, the soul worth, the soul value, the love of ourselves on a physical, mental, spiritual level, and that will boost our spiritual, mental, and physical immune systems. And of course, the more that we understand about energy, the more that we can affect the frequencies that are put out there. So we need a new frequency tradition. We need a high vibe frequency. Again, no matter what's going, what's going on, right? The thing is, is that we can't actually worry in this particular time frame because that's not serving us. That's actually to the detriment of the collective. And there's really all that we can do is for 
our little pod in this world, right? For our home with our families in it. And we need to practice the love thy neighbor, right? So if you have a neighbor in need, make sure you help them out. If you have a friend in need, make sure you help them out. Make sure that you check on your loved ones and the ones that are at the higher levels of risk. And, you know, just do your own due diligence to not perpetuate this entire situation. That's the fastest and easiest route through all of this. And of course, that is us together, right? So let's go ahead and get into the chart for this new moon and we'll break it down even further because um, we are definitely in a time in which um, <laughs> is the education of as above, so below is going to be very useful and remember that that statement just doesn't end there as above so below as within so without as the soul so to the universe okay so this is all intertwined this is not a separative type of effect or event right and so getting deeper into this this new moon that's happening here in aries with chiron direct and, and this has actually been going on. We've been having um, <clears throat> new moons in Aries with Chiron there for I, about the last three years, to be very honest. And it's all been within these very early degrees of um, Aries. And Chiron has, always, has been constantly reminding us that we need to make this change. We need to make this massive transformation. We need to come around and really look at ourselves, you know, as an individual. All right, so this is that cardinal T-square. Actually, let me change the color of this. Um, the cardinal T-square to the south node, the north node, and the opposition, okay? So um, for any of you who are just kind of coming online to the awareness of astrology and are still learning, the north node is in each of our charts personally, but this is the collective transits of now. North node represents where we as a collective need to go, the attributes of cancer, the attributes of the fourth house, and it's ruled by the moon, okay? So there is a major statement about our emotions and how we need to come into ourselves. As a collective, we need to face the emotional um, unconscious part of ourselves, the place in which we haven't processed uh, individual or collective trauma. And it's about the moon is every single experience that you've ever been through. You know, we store these experiences in our own DNA, in our own body, different parts of our body, right? That's why it's like physical pain is a manifestation of emotional pain. So you may have stored a lot of experiences locked in your hips and your hips are just so tight. You can't really like stretch out your legs. You can't touch your toes. You know, a lot of people store their stress and their experiences and their shoulders and their neck. They get tension headaches and um, just they feel like the pressure of the world is on them and it really weighs them down. And so like hunching, slouching over, right? So the moon is also our intuitions, and this has been a collective checkpoint about using your intuitions to be discerning about where you're at and who you're there with. Because as I was saying before, you know, how, how does it feel to have to go into quarantine with people in your home and family unit that you have completely outgrown that you no longer have a connection to and that you have already done pretty much everything in the physical world to show that you don't want to be around that person and now that's all you can do is be around that person in a place that you're meant to supposed to feel safe feel secure feel protected cancer is the home it's also the representation of the mother in the zodiac. It's a, it's a luminary, the moon, right? And it's feminine, it's water, it's cardinal. So it's an initiation process into the flow of intuition that teaches us about how to be compassionate and how to um, really focus on other people others other than just ourselves, but how to nurture, how to care, how to grow a family, how to keep it alive and viable by cooking, cleaning, organizing, um, you know, giving hugs, giving kisses. That's all the cap or cancer energy. And then our south node is talking about 
you know, in your own personal chart, when you look at it, like for instance, my South node is in Scorpio. It's saying that in my last lifetime, I was a Scorpio. Same as um, this is saying collectively, we were all incarnated on earth, basically at some other point in our um, soul's journey throughout time and space, because this is the rulership that Capricorn is the 10th house. It's earth cardinal, right? Initiating into the earth's sphere in order to be an incarnated physical being. And Capricorn rules over government structure, finances, rules, regulations, boundaries, borders, um, laws, all of that sort of stuff, but it also represents a place in which we talk about our soul's destiny, the reason that we came here, uh, our legacy, our contribution to this planet. And we are activated star seeds here who are in this particular collective. And we know that we came here for a mission. So we came here to heal humanity through love and compassion, through building a new age style family and home and really releasing this old school um, suppression state that the Capricorn structure has been built upon. And in the chart, Capricorn is represented by the father figure, okay? And it goes very deep. It goes to Kronos, uh, Saturn. The representation of Capricorn is Kronos also as, is known as, a, you know, kind of like a satanic figure or Satan itself himself whatever self um <clears throat> so we're looking at this divine masculine divine feminine oppositional energy with the north and south node on a collective level and whenever we're talking about t-square energy the funnel point the exit is where the um, apex is pointing to which is this new moon and also chiron um, that's been involved in this for a while. So Aries is the birth, okay? So that's why the astrological new year starts with zero degrees of Aries whenever we go into, um, in the Northern Hemisphere, the spring equinox and fall in the Southern, right? So Aries is whenever you take form into the physical body and you you leave Pisces, right? You, you go through your soul journey in Pisces and you incarnate into Aries. And so you are the child in Aries. You don't know anything yet. It's, it's you know, part of uh, what represents a full card in the tarot deck, the zero point and the first initial steps. You don't have any information. You're still learning. You're learning through experience. It's a Mars ruled sign. It's fire, cardinal fire, initiating into the transmutation of learning who you are right? So that's a really big part of all of this is learning who you are in the process, learning how to heal through these processes, and learning that your story can change at any moment. Your direction can change at any moment. First House deals with a lot of directional types of conversation because it's like, it's ruled by the planet of war, right? Who is right here with Pluto right now, Mars and Pluto in Capricorn joined with the Jupiter stellium and also now connected fully with Saturn who's just moved into <laughs> excuse me Aquarius and that's a big deal <laughs> this is all a big deal so um with this funnel point going through the Aries it's saying look at you know, yourself, but look at the things that you still have not matured within. Because the mother father archetype of Cancer Capricorn wants there to be a level of maturity amongst their young, right? That's why the parents teach children, even though the children should be teaching the parents. Um, we have this idea that we're meant to pass along this knowledge and information but we have been passing along knowledge and information that is false and untrue. And so this is part of our new collective responsibility is to educate our young on the things that are actually freaking happening, on to not literally hand over all of your trust and all of your um, power to a system that is corrupt, to a system that is built to suppress the consciousness of human beings, right? So we have to teach our youth how to live in their true authentic 
authoritative power of self. And that has to do with us, the people who are already of a mature age, making the right decisions and leading from the front, showing that this time frame isn't about losing, it's about gaining. And you know what? Silver and gold may vanish away, but the knowledge of Ja is forever to stay. Okay? Like, really. To trust in God is the only way you're rich or you're poor. It don't matter. It really doesn't matter. You could be rich in wealth of physical, tangible possessions and money, and you could be absolutely broke and poor in the quality of your soul. And so this is where everything is really like the weak are getting, the wheat is being separated from the shaft per se. Okay, so the conscious, spiritually pure, um, highly integrity based individuals are going to rise as the cream of the crop, whether they were uh, physically poor or not, right? Because that is the new wealth. The new wealth is health and spirituality. All right, so, you know, uh, that's good news for a lot of us out there. And all of this falsehood, all of this. You know, it's like, really, you're going to rush out and buy a new pair of Jordans now? Like, really, you want the latest what now? Right? Like, perspective has been given. And no, I want to go home. I want to be with those who mean the most to me. I want to cultivate myself. I want to see what can I do whenever everything in the outside world seemingly has been taken from me. How high can I rise? If you're anything like me out there, you know, I, I get up stronger, harder, and faster when I get kicked down. And so I've actually done a lot in my life to make myself not be just that person that only rises when oppression happens, you know, like just kind of keep it in your mind to constantly and consistently rise. There's a lot of us who, who you know, heard the trumpet sound. And it's been about three and a half years, four years ago, that there were a lot of actual literal trumpets sounding in the sky, unexplainably. All over the world, people were reporting, hearing trumpets coming from the sky, like dead ass. That's not a metaphor. That's not a joke. That's literal. And I was sitting on a different couch at the time, but the same same spot right behind me there. And I heard the trumpets in Las Vegas. And I'm not the only one. And from that moment forward, my life completely and totally started to shift into a different direction. I went to work and I quit. And I did facials on the Las Vegas Strip. I can't imagine being at this particular time frame and that being my position right? No longer able to work with the public, no longer able to work. They shut Las Vegas down. The casinos are finished. Like, it's so interesting. It's just like such a fascinating time. But I put myself in this position right here. That's why nothing changes for me. And my workload is still the same as it always is because my workload, I made it my personal mission to daily bring the information forward about how to cultivate a sustainable and productive life outside of the regular human atmosphere of, you know, everybody being all mixed up in everybody else's reindeer games. I've been talking about this since I very first started my channel, and I've always stated that I use astrology as my verbiage, right? Because this is deep. This is why this is quantum astrology. There is not just one size fits all. This is a simple answer that's going around. There's layers, there's depths, there's intricacies going on. And it's not just, it's like it, it really does serve you to realize the level of experience and intelligence that is behind the factors that are at work always They're, they didn't just go to work last month and start this whole shit this shit has been going on for thousands of years so this is not um new news to any of us here this is new news to a vast amount of the population because you know it's not that easy to do the work to wake up. 
but everything has been pointing us in that direction. Everything has been saying, you know, either you, you stop going to war with yourself or the entire global structure is going to continue to go to war with you. If you think that something is against you, then you know what? It is because you are the creator of your own reality. And until you accept that, until you understand that, know that, download that, run that as your operating program, you're going to continue to be a slave in this arch excuse me, archetype of controllership, censorship, suppression, the whole nine yards. So we have to rise up. We have to collectively band together. And it's going to take each and every one of us to do this. So in addition, this new moon is making a semi-sextile to Uranus at four degrees, okay? And Uranus has been a major power player in all of these, um, you know, uh, eclipses and major, major uh, luminary new moon, full moons, and stuff like that. Uranus has been playing a big part. And again, going through the house of tradition and values, right? And shaking it all up, changing it. And I think it's just really mind-blowing to see how everything is going to change from here on out. Whenever things get lifted and we're able to basically go outside again and rejoin the collective, uh, I mean, of course, we're not going to do it in the same way that we did. We're not just all going to run out, jump in our car and go somewhere. The planet is, is presently healing, right? Pollution is way down. The waters are way cleaner. We're going to see new species of, I'm sure, animals and plants. And the world is going to show us something that we've never given it a chance to show us. I mean, how magnificent are the things that are actually going on? So it's funny to, to know that this has been done in the name of darkness and evil, and the light is going to continue to rise, and new life is giving birth to itself as we take a break and we stop with all of this excess extra shit that is absolutely unnecessary completely and totally unnecessary. And we're all getting such a perspective of our own minds. This is what's changing our mind. And remember that Uranus is the ruler of Aquarius where Saturn has just moved to. And Uranus is about evolution. It's the revolution that happens whenever the people band together and fight for a social cultural change and break tradition and go against the system, go against the status quo of humanity and break the chains that have put them into the obligation of being a carbon copy of everybody else around them. Uranus is very abstract, very unique, very individualistic. Um, Uranus is also futuristic, time travel, extraterrestrial, it's cosmic origins, it's the sky god, it's the great illuminator. And so we, this new moon is illuminating our way forward that semi sextile it's half of a sextile okay so it, it doesn't have as much potency as a sextile but it still represents that there is potential and there's potential for a vast amount of the population on an individual level to have these instantaneous downloads that are coming from our cosmic origins our starseed locations and giving us the correct information in order to really um, come up with some creative problem solutions right about now because of course we all have to ban in this discussion together and so we are going to connect through different methods through different applications and we're going to come up with a lot more sustainable programs for us and I mentioned it on Sun Soul TV it would be really great if whenever we do go back to um, you know freedom of movement that we choose to you know, these large corporations allow people to work from home, allow us to focus on the most important things in life, allow us to be with our children and our loved ones, and to not feel such high level pressure, the rat race of stress, like let's try to illuminate a lot of the congestion with these fossil fuel consuming gas guzzlers. 
whenever we went through the Vegas shooting uh, two years ago here, uh, because of the route change that that caused, you know, I ended up having to go a different direction home one night and I got nailed in my car. And when I did, I started taking Uber and I never stopped. I, I gave my car back. I like literally like buy car. Like I don't need you anymore because there's Uber. I work from home, right? I don't need to go everywhere and do everything. I'm very selective on where I go and what I do. And I've been that way for two years now. And I practice always having my food delivered. Even if it's like grocery store stuff, I still order Whole Foods off Amazon. I have another app called Instacart, which has Vons and Smiths and um, Sprouts. If you're like West Coaster, you know what those ones are. It even has like Sur La Table and Petco and PetSmart and also Costco. So literally... Um, there's some of us like myself who've done a lot to just take themselves out of the equation of all of this like mass overpopulation, mass pollution. And that is like, that's the future, right? If anybody remembers that movie from back in the day, um, it had Sandra Bullock in it. And basically she was a computer programmer and she would order, like, I remember, um, Oh, I don't remember what it's called, but you guys probably know what I'm talking about. Um, but basically that at that point seemed like, oh my God, how futuristic is that, that you can have your groceries delivered to your home and um, order through the computer to get a pizza delivered or something like that. And it's just, we've far exceeded all of it. And it's like, there's something weird about our consciousness that we have FaceTime, we have everything that can still connect us without having to be physically involved in this BS. But for some reason, it's in our collective consciousness to be involved in high level stress and in high levels of activity. Like everybody's, um, I don't want to say everybody, but we're in the age of social whoring right? And it's, it's, it's crazy because we don't need to. Like everything that I've done for Sun Soul Astrology, like, you know, now on Sun Soul Astrology on YouTube, I use it as promotion because I never, ever did before. Like I never asked for somebody to like my videos. I never asked for nobody to share them. I never asked for people to subscribe. Like, I still don't say that. It's not a part of my verbiage. Whenever Shauna Christine comes on or a spiritual bodybuilder and I post their videos, I always ask people to share, subscribe, and like, and comment. And I always kind of observe. It's so funny because I, I love doing it for them because I support them. I don't do it for myself. And so that's where I started on YouTube putting my own advertisements on my videos because you know what? Why not? Like literally, why not? I'm offering a service of information and I'm connecting every day. It's, it's literal work, right? Um, and I've built a lot of things, you know? It's, it's beautiful to have created a system of support that's very genuine. And so it has a bigger effect than what people have been doing for so long and, and actually like basically buying followers, buying views, buying likes, buying comments, buying attention that isn't even actually there. And it's, 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 I hope that this particular time frame illuminates a collective consciousness to that right there is that the level of bullshit that humanity has been on and the level of just like selfish nonsensical anything like just straight nonsense like people have had an IV of bullshit just inserted into their veins pumping them full of false life 24 hours a day for like some people their whole lives like it's it's crazy it's crazy and now here you go like how you how do you feel about me now you know like na 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 like <laughs> I hope you have woken up to those who have been, you know, just completely asleep at the wheel, completely asleep at the wheel. You want to come home and you want to sit on social media and 
scroll through your Facebook and your Instagram and your Twitter feed, what have you been saying? What have you contributed? What have you, what have you, what, what is, what do you as an individual represent in this world? Have you been about anything at all? Like people are strange. People are really, really, really strange. And I think that, um, a lot of people's glimpse at themselves, right? Because we all know that there's people who don't even look at themselves in the face in the mirror. And now they're going to have to do that plus. And it's going to be an interesting one. So as, again, we go through this new moon, um, those are the major aspects that are happening. All right. That's all the new moon aspects that are going on. Uh, the square to the nodes, the conjunction to Chiron, and um, the semi-square to Venus over here at 20 degrees. This is actually my north node degree at 20 degrees of Taurus. Um, and the semi-sextile to Uranus. So the other things that are going on in the chart, of course, is this massive stellium and the fact, again, that Saturn has moved to Aquarius at zero degrees. And so, yes, there's going to be an interesting tug of war to say the least. It's the tug of war between freedom and suppression. And that is the Saturn experience in the sign of Aquarius because it's very fascinating whenever you look at the fact that, yes, Saturn is a co-ruler to Aquarius. I don't actually go by that whatsoever. That's an ancient terminology before they found Uranus um, because they're opposites completely, complete and total opposites. But Uranus is the father of Saturn. So Saturn is rebellious, even though Uranus is known as the great rebellion, right? Saturn is rebellious against his father because Uranus is about freedom and equality and togetherness, wholeness, and Saturn wants to create restrictions and place separation and create distancing, create, um, you know, and this is lower vibrational terms that I'm talking about. I'm not talking about just in general because Saturn teaches us authority and authenticity and teaches us about responsibility and also teaches us patience from a healthy perspective. Uranus is instantaneous. It's quantum. So is Aquarius and that 11th house energy. So the place in which suppression and control and restriction happens is moving into the place in which all that is obliterated. So as we go through this switcheroo, you know, again, Saturn is going to retrograde at about one degrees uh, sometime in July and then move back into Capricorn, go to 25 degrees before we transit forward again, go through all of this phase all over again, and then move back into Aquarius. So this isn't, this is going to be a sliding scale kind of event. And right now, to anybody who hasn't completely woken up to the system and to the structure and to the actual, you know, gaslighting, lies, manipulation, and falsehood of this reality, you, you really need to get on the ball and set yourself up because, you know, even if those of us in the spiritual community haven't implemented the things that we know that we need to, at least I am pretty secure whenever I say that you all know what you need to do. You've all had this nagging voice in the back of your head for Lord knows how, how long. And, you know, the, the, the fact that it's been ignored and it hasn't been implemented because there were so many unnecessary fears and insecurities that have now been rendered hysterical in a lot of senses. Like, do we really care what people think about us now? Right? It's more important to show up and to shine the light than to worry about if one person is going to judge you for doing that in a system that has now proven itself to be falser than false and more, more 
of a time waster than anything that a person could have ever done previously speaking. So whenever we look at the fact that Mars and Pluto are in the sign of Capricorn together, when they rule over Scorpio, the eighth house over here, right? Scorpio is all about death and rebirth and about the transition from lies into truth. Scorpio is the investigator. These two planets right here are illuminating the truth of the situation, but from a very dark perspective because it is the underworld. It is the hell realms. And so we're trying to be lifted up. And Jupiter is attempting to, Jupiter is attempting to lift up those lower worlds and lower vibrations of humanity through education. And right now, there's really nothing to do other than to be educated. Spend time with yourself, spend time with books, spend time with documentaries. Don't just watch the news. You know, tune in for five minutes a day, catch up and move the frick on. You know, really and truly study anything that you want to study. I'm not even going to give a guide. You know, for me personally, I'm an insane nut about quantum physics, about consciousness, about spirituality, about, you know, I mean, I study conspiracy theories for so freaking long that I'm not actually interested in any of that anymore. Like, I already know. <laughs> and this isn't... This isn't a surprise, right? Like there's certain things that many of us have already investigated to the point in which it's like beating a dead horse if we want to go back over it now. This isn't a surprise because we've been keeping up with the false bullshit for a long, long time. But some people need to actually start there. Some people need to look at the things that have been happening in the world that they just continue to let happen right? And wake up from that point. But Mars and Pluto, they're the investigator. And so the government is being investigated. The structure of everything is being investigated. The truth is being investigated. And there's a lot of people who are going to be very pissed off when they figure all of this out. And they're going to start screaming it from the mountaintops like the rest of us never knew. And so who's going to look crazy now kind of a thing, right? Now we're going to be the normal, cool, calm, collected ones while everybody else is out there freaking the fuck out, running through the streets, trying to tell the people that there's something wrong, that this isn't what we believe, that we've been lied to this entire time. And it's going to be like, it's going to be fun to watch. <laughs> it's definitely going to be fun to watch because literally like how much more do we have to say about it? The ones who have been saying everything all day long forever. You know, for for three years now, basically, I produced a video every single day in which I've spoken at least a half an hour to an hour, if not more. Never ran out of content. Never once ran short of freaking something to say or to channel because there's so much going on, and it's not a it's not a one department type of thing this stretches from pharmaceuticals to food to air to water to your literal consciousness to on planet to off planet to like there's not a single element of life that's left out of the truth equation and the prevention of having your nor your your human rights removed from you like damn you know, super damn. So I'm I'm not one to say that this is uh, for the worst, that this is doesn't serve us in our highest and our best. It's not fun. Definitely people are going to perish, but it is going to leave the world a very different place. And it's going to be up to us completely on the difference of this place. So as an FYI to any of you who haven't been really keeping up and are again just kind of joining in, Mercury, the planet that rules over our mind and our communication, it rules over our um, technology, moving parts, the internet, the ways in which we connect and also the ways in which we do channel higher dimensional knowledge and information. And Mercury has come out of retrograde and is covering back over the degrees in which we were in that state. 
Okay, so Mercury went retrograde at 13 degrees of Pisces, and it will finish its post-retrograde on the 29th of this month. So we're still in a phase of which we're reviewing everything that we went over. Um, we're still reviewing our connection to Christ consciousness, to God, to source, to infinity, our ability to really transmit um again a cosmic spiritual message and this mercury is making trine to the north node and the north node again the collective destiny and it's done this three different times this is its third pass it's its final pass okay so the trine is about um support it's saying that you have support right here so take the support of the information that you are gathering from your own deep soul work and understand the way that it's directing you forward okay what is it telling you that you need to do inside your home for your family for your divine feminine energy how do you how are you receiving the message from source right now what can it do to lend to the collective now final thing that i really want to talk about before we go and actually there's two more things i want to talk about these trines from venus going to jupiter pluto and mars as well as saturn right so this is a relationship aspect okay in many senses because venus brings in that relationship love aspect mars is venus's lover um, we're talking about desire we're talking about passion with pluto there it gets very intense it can get very um magnetized as well okay in many cases it's going to be very intriguing and very connected right because we're at home what else are we going to do especially if we're uh <laughs> you know in some aspects is what i'm saying like if we're quarantined with our partner um we're of course going to have some very heated uh, sexual encounters and this is a great time to bond and to merge and to learn how to you know work the arts of Kama Sutra and also Kundalini uh, activations Kundalini yoga with your partner uh, doing eye gazing things like that getting into that person's soul with the Pluto trine um, Jupiter going through that deep expansion of love and compassion um, going through the, the the connection of manifestation right whenever multiple souls put their aim into a particular direction and especially use sexual alchemy which is what all of this is pointing towards it becomes very heightened it becomes very expansive and it allows for um basically a shift in the multi-dimensional spectrum to happen and for that to show up physically the the manifestation of energy that shared sexually through the transmutation shows up physically and so again you know if we're practicing these sort of techniques with our partners while we have all this extra time and energy on our hands i'm sure because uh, also it's a great workout right and people pajamas are closed so you may want to invest time in that sense but on another like more metaphysical sense we are connecting into the higher divine aspects of our masculine and feminine we're really learning about our own psychological processes we're learning in our path to self-discovery and to higher knowledge and wisdom we're we're taking authority to change the tradition of our of our minds right to change the tradition of what we do whenever we're at home of what we value you know stop valuing bullshit tv shows and value you know an audio book if you don't like to read i'm not a big reader i i actually dislike reading i really do i mean it's just it's me because i'm dyslexic it gets frustrating sometimes but um i love to listen to information so an audio book is a perfect resource for someone like myself who doesn't um like reading as much documentaries again like you know just diving into what excites you because again this is dealing with mars and venus passion and desire find what ignites you find what really feeds your soul and what you can create a structure on moving forward because that's you know the trying to saturn it's saying there is a foundation that is going to be built that needs to be built that can be built and that it we need to be looking at long term okay long term value 
long-term structure, stability, happiness, love, contentment, joy, abundance, gratitude, all these sort of things. These have not gone anywhere, okay? And they're not going to go anywhere. We're not going to lose ourselves in this process. We're going to learn more. We're going to gain more. We're going to experience more. And yes, there is frustration for sure because we have this square going on with um, Saturn and Uranus. And it's the clash of the father and the son. It's a clash of the authority and the freedom figure, the freedom fighter and the oppressor. So we know that this is literally changing the face of the nature of our reality. And the more that we can go with the flow, and find peace, find calm, find collective serenity, the better off that we're gonna be because yes, this is about whenever order becomes chaotic and that's now what we're seeing, but yet somehow we're still maintaining a responsible, responsible amount of order. And I think that that more that we do that, the more that's gonna show our collective maturity. And it's not in order to follow the suppression rulership, it's in order to gain the stronghold back into our freedom states. And it's gonna be because we, you know, the trusting factors out there are going to be proven to be us as individuals and not the same structure that we, as a general population have pretty much put our uh, fate into. So let's go ahead and read the degree for this new moon and then we will wrap it up. All right, four degrees where the sun and moon are meeting in Aries today is a cup overflowing with clear water. Magic when someone is ready and willing to stand there and allow all of existence to stream through and pour through them. They shall activate the forces of magic and return of wonder and the feeling for what can be. Abandoning yourself to the frequency of boundless discovery and naive, raw, initial disclosure, exhilarated, ecstatic, triumphant, unable to contain yourself one moment longer, so enthusiastic and alive that you must find kin playmates to go places with a cut loose and cut loose together a state of being that begs for shared to be shared that must be spoken invoked and honored it is the release point or a flood of new impulses and when given full momentum it rallies inspires sets the world on fire and laughs so delightedly and uproaringly that no one can resist joining in. Oh my God, I'm so grateful for this degree because this is so expressive of all of it that, you know, a cup that's overflowing with clear water, our planet is coming back to that state where the waters are becoming clear. And so is the air, right? So is like the quality of our lives in so many different senses because we're detoxing from so much bullshit like so much bullshit, but magic, when someone is ready and willing to stand there and allow all of existence to stream and pour through them, this is what it's about. Each and every one of us, especially those of us who are activating on a higher level or just waking up right now, those are the ones who are willing to stand there and just let it all pour through and let, let themselves just filter out the collective shit and, and purge it out and, and really go deep into the integration of what we're learning on a collective level right now. This is no longer the individual. It's so interesting how the topic changes immediately. Saturn goes into Aquarius and we can no longer talk about, you know, just me or just you, just the individual. Everything is about the collective completely. They shall activate the forces of magic the return of wonder and the feeling of what can be. The feeling of what can be is that reminder to be optimistic, to be hopeful, to be in the attitude of, of grace and joy for the fact that we're no longer asleep. To just, to, to be grateful for waking up, to be grateful to not, for not being um, bamboozled by all of this, <laughs> I like that word, um, is such an exciting thing. 
and people are going to look like they were just born, you know, coming into this dynamic knowledge of like, oh my God, like I have a, a soul and a spirit and it's free and I don't have to be involved in this anymore. I can take my power. I can change my life. Like that's the activation of magic. Activate the forces of magic, the return of wonder. The possibilities are endless from here on out. So endless because now we all have ideas. We all have massive ideas. Abandon yourself to the frequency of boundless discovery and naive, raw, initial disclosure, exhilarated, ecstatic, triumphant. Wow. Right? Because like initial disclosure and becoming exhilarated and excited and triumphant. I mean, this is all leading us towards disclosure. This is the system crash before the reboot and the restart of the truth actually occurs. And I mean, <laughs> they're already putting us in the perfect place to tell us what's really going on. So I really hope that they take full advantage of this time frame and make it happen. Unable to contain yourself one moment longer. Yeah, <laughs> I know that that's going to go on a mixed bag of ways. Um, in a major mixed bag of ways. Because some people aren't going to be able to contain themselves and they're just going to go nuts. Other people are just not able to contain the joy and the elation of all of, again, these possibilities of what, how we can move forward as a collective from here. Now, again, that the bullshit has been wiped off the table, literally, <laughs> so literally, you know, me and uh, best friend David, we went to Whole Foods, uh, by the time this airs, it'll be night before it last, but they had, uh, you had to wait in line and you had to stand six feet apart from each other and the whole name of social distancing, they were taking responsibility and making it to where only a certain amount of people could be in the store at a particular time. And they were washing down all of the carts. Like as soon as the cart came out, they took it and they washed it down completely, like completely. Like, and you got to watch this process happen, like every single morsel of the cart, like all of the carts that were like lined up, they were blinging, like they looked like magnificent. And it was like waiting in line at Disneyland to get on a ride. It's like, we're next in line to get in the Whole Foods, you know, and we're going to go in, we're going to go to Whole Foods. And it's like, wow, long gone are the days when you could just walk your ass into Whole Foods, right? And, and get your stuff and go home. No, now you have to like really separate yourself and, and practice um, the six degrees of separation, six feet of separation. It's really weird excuse me, but um, <laughs> I think that so enthusiastic and alive that you must find kin, playmates to go places with and cut loose together. Uh, we're finding new ways of doing this, okay? Um, whenever we did go through the line in Whole Foods, the clerk was saying the reason that they did it is because people are being, have been so bored at home that they're actually just going to the grocery store for something to do. Okay. And that it's putting the people who are still working at risk just because others are bored. So it's their way of discouraging that from happening. And as this degree is talking about you know, we are becoming much more enthusiastic. We're becoming much more alive because we've actually had a chance to like sit down and like process some of ourselves to actually sleep in, to take a nap, to, to really kind of, uh, you know, uh, get some new juices flowing through our existence. And um, I know a lot of people have been using Zoom the same platform that I work on to meet, like do happy hours and get a group of their friends together and just all sit in front of the computer and have a drink and, you know, talk about things. And that's really also a great use of, of getting together and going places together that, it, that is very different, right? But we don't have to actually be separated and we don't have to actually lose out. You know, if you want to go to happy hour with your friends, set up a Zoom experience like do some creative things like that and uh, I mean we have more time on our hands there's endless ways for us to practice new ways of being 
a state of being that begs to be shared. Mm -hmm. This is what we're talking about. That must be spoken, invoked, and honored. So we're going to make it happen. And we're going to absolutely go through this release point. It is the release point, the flood of new impulses. Yes. And when given full momentum, it rallies, inspires, sets the world on fire, and laughs so delightedly and uproaringly that no one can resist joining in. And that is the truth of what's happening. That is the truth of the light workers and the way showers. We're, we're banding together to show a way that's never been shown before. And we are going to make it through all of this. And we're going to do it in such a way that is absolutely unprecedented on a much better scale. And I don't think that it's over by any means. I think that we're going to continue to see a lot of ramifications of this time frame for a while, especially considering the astrology and how it looks moving forward. Um, this is our new normal. This is our new flow. And so from this, a new earth is going to be born because this is not the same one that we were in. This is not the new, this is the same one. The old world is now split for real. And so we are in charge of birthing this new one. And we're going to have to take responsibility for each and every action past this point. So I love you all so very much. If you aren't already subscribed to sunsoul.tv, it would be amazing if you did. Please absolutely rent for 24 hours for $2 here and there. That's a great way to support me personally during this time as my business is completely based through this type of apparatus. And I'm going to continue to show up every day. Um, as far as Sun Soul Astrology on YouTube, I'm not going to be marketing or advertising anything. Of course, my readings are still available, but you already know that. So other than the link to my websites that are still going to appear in the um, videos, I'm not going to put anything out there. It's your choice if you want to support me. If you do want to like, share, comment, and um, subscribe that would be absolutely fantastic i would greatly appreciate it all new moon full moon and eclipse videos are always released early on sun soul tv before they are on youtube and so you're always welcome to check them out previous to their release and i love you all so very much please take care of yourselves and those that are closest nearest and dearest to you and enjoy this time of finding a new way to live in this new world all right. I love you all so very much. And of course, I will see all of you tomorrow. God bless.